now that you have written this, now that you've written your identities from the top of page 481, <coughs> excuse me, now that you've written your identities down on your identity sheet from the top of page 481, let's prove to ourselves that they work. Okay, let's do this using the warm-up we just had. So you can just put this in your notes. In your notes, you need to write some and different identities. I'll just shorten it to ID. These are the sum and difference identities. Do you see why? Because we're adding them and subtracting, right? Sum and difference, add and subtract. Sum and difference identities. What we're going to do now is we're going to redo our warm-up. Remember on the warm-up where we had sine of x plus y, isn't that right? Now we know that we can't distribute the word sine or the function of sine. What will it equal? Look at your identity. This is the only difference is instead of a and b, I have x and y. So what will it be? Sine x. Isn't it cosine now? We're doing the sine with addition. So look at your sheet with the sine with addition. Sine of x cosine of y plus cosine of x sine of y. Now you do have to memorize this, and so let me give you a little way. You'll probably have it memorized, all four of them, not the tangent ones, but you'll probably have all four of the sine and cosine ones memorized before you leave today. Here's what I say. You can say whatever you want to, but this is how I memorize it and what you'll hear me say. The sine identity is seco cosi. C Coco C. I think there used to be a monkey that did sign language. His name was Coco. And for some reason that reminds me of that. I'll have to look up a clip of that. C Coco C is what you'll hear me say. Just to remember that sign starts with sign and it's C Coco C. So if I say that for sign, look at cosine. What will I say for cosine, do you think? Look at the cosine. Coco C C. C Coco C. Coco C C. I know. Okay. Now, notice. Ah, uh, yeah, you could be yes. What is Coco? What's Co? In? Yes to someone named Coco. There you go. Yes, dog, yes. Basically, is what you're saying. Okay. The one thing also to notice is this. Do you notice the X and the Y? Stay X and Y and stay X and Y. Every year I have somebody put X, Y, and then they put. Yx, and that's not right for any of those functions. It's always the first one, second one is first, second, first, second every time. Okay? Now, here's another little tricky thing. On sign, the sign matches. You see that? Because when it's a plus in here, it's a plus right there. When it's a minus in here for sign, what is it here? Minus. But now look down at the cosine one. In cosine, when it's a plus in here, it's a minus. So you get it? When it's sine, the sine matches. Okay. So here we are. So we're going to fill this in. We're going to do both sides again with, what was it from our warm-up? X was 5 or 6 and Y is. So we're just proving to ourselves that this one works. Here we go. You can do this by yourself. Just go through putting your pi over 6 and your pi over 2 where they go. Try not to look at mine. That's what the problem a lot of you have is you just copy down mine instead of making yourself think this through. Sarah, get started. Don't get behind. I'm just doing the left side exactly like it is over there. So 
So the left side, it, we already did today. Same thing. But on the right side this time, I'm going to find the sine of pi over 6. I know these from memory. seeing it? Hopefully you're doing it by yourself and just checking with mine as you go along. Half times 0 is 0. Square root of 3 over 2 times 1 is square root of 3 over 2. And of course 0 plus the square root of 3 over 2 is now that one works. Okay, so all we were doing was proving to ourselves that that identity works. I could do the warm up with cosine, but it's going to work as well. So we're going to move on. Yes, sir. Not on these. You can. If you want to be consistent, sure. Okay, so let's see how we do our homework. What is your homework? It's certainly not due today. We just started. In fact, it's not due tomorrow either. Your other homeworks, your identity homeworks, due tomorrow. We're starting some new homework today. Four through eight. I'm going to let you do on your own. And then we go 9 through 39, multiples of 3. 9 through 39, multiples of 3. Hopefully you have the correct. Um, 9 through, I have 39. Nine through 39, multiples of 3. Okay, so I'm just going to do some random ones from here. We'll start with number 9. So I'm just actually, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to actually do some examples out of the book. I'm on page 476 if you want to follow along, but I do want you to put these examples in your book. Um, I'm doing example three. What you might want to put is it's going to be exactly like numbers nine through twenty. Just a second. Okay, here we go again. This is example four seventy six. Example number three on page 476 out of the book. And it is going to be um, exactly like numbers 9 through 20. So if you want to write this up here, this is what you need to look at, this example, to help you with numbers 9 through 20. Robbie, bring that to me. And no, you can't go to the restroom. Okay, it says the sine of 7 pi 12. Everybody see where I am? Try not to just copy it out of the book. In fact, hardly look at it. Okay, well, if this said the sine of 7 pi over 6, I could just grab it off my unit circle. Do you have some more you're writing this down? If this were the sine of 7 pi over 6, I'd be done, right? <laughs> But I don't know 7 pi 12. Why don't I know the sine of 7 pi 12? It's not on our unit circle. But we just learned that I can, I know how to do sine of something plus something. So let's think. Are there two values that are on your unit circle that add to be 7 pi 12? Let's think this through. Let's see. 
sine. Okay, well, let's think. Pi over 2. If we like pi over 2, what is that as a 12? Pi over 2 is really 6 pi 12s, right? I'd have to have one more pi 12, and that's not on my unit circle, so that one's not going to work. Can I do pi over 6? So what is pi over 6? That's 2 pi. Then I'd need 5. I think we better go with an odd number. What about 4 pi over 6? 4 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 do not add to be 7 pi 12. 4 pi over 3. We want to try that one? Hold on. Somebody said 4 pi over 3. What is that with the 12 on the bottom? That's times 4. Isn't that 16 pi over 12? Wait, and I multiply by 4 and by 4? Okay, hang on. 16 pi over 12 is the same as 4 pi over 3, right? But then I'd have to subtract how many to get 7? 16 minus what is 7? 16 minus 9 is 7, is that right? 16 minus 9. So, does everybody agree with that? Hang on a second. So, 16 pi 12 minus 9 pi 12 is 7 pi 12. You good with that? Okay, so now let's reduce to see if they're on my unit circle. That's 4 pi thirds, that's right, minus, when this reduces, what is that? 3 pi fourths, when I reduce by 3. Now, let me give a moment for everybody to think about what we did. We just had to play with anything with the 12 as a denominator until we got, in this case, a difference. There were some that would work as a sum. Okay, did anybody find one that works as a sum? Say it again. Pi over 3 plus pi over 4. As a 12, that would be what? 4 pi 12 plus 3 pi 12. Now, guys, if you want to do yours, that's fine. What did the book do? 3 pi 12s and 4 pi 12s. Oh, no wonder you got another book. Okay, we're not going to do it like the book. We're going to do the one we thought of. And then we'll see if our answer matches the book. Okay? So you might want to leave this here. You might want to leave this part here in your notes so that you understand what you did. We were just looking for anything that either added or subtracted to 7 pi 12 that was on our unit circle. Okay. So making sure you understand the deal of today is we're adding uh, six new identities to our identity sheet and learning how we use those. Okay. That's the goal of today. Now, so if I've got this, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Forget it. If I've got this, let's go ahead. It's sine, so it's C, co, co, C, right? So it's sine, sine of the first guy, 4 pi third, times what? Come on, I'm not going to do it for you. Cosine of the second guy. Now, don't make it negative 3 pi fourths. That negative will take care of itself when we put a sign right here. So it's 3 pi fourths minus, oh wait, no, is it minus? Yeah. Yes, because in sine, the sign matches. Sine, cosine, now we're going to need, mine's too big. Sine, cosine, now it's cosine again, but this time it's the cosine of the first part, which is 4 pi thirds, and then sine of 3 pi fourths. Now you understand? Now you're just going and grabbing things off your unit circle. Do it by yourself. Go to 4 pi thirds. See, it's nice if you have these memorized.
Now, once you have yours filled in, double check that they're correct with mine. Do you not have any place you can write these down? Do you, to, today, before you came to school, it got stolen? Okay, do you not, can you borrow a pencil and maybe get a piece of paper out of the recycle bin? Okay, let's be creative here. I'm thinking anything besides wasting our time. Okay, so let's do this. This comes down to, do you know your math from a while back? What do we get here? Negative times a negative is a? Square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is? The square root of 6 over, be careful, it is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. When you multiply, you change your denominators. Okay, send you up. Minus negative square root of 2 over 4. Now what? Not much to do except for the minus negative will turn to plus, right? Can I add the square root of 6 and the square root of 2 actually together? They're not like terms. Just like you couldn't add an x and a y physically together, you can't add these together. So it's the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. It stays a 4. When you add fractions, the denominator stays. It had to match. Luckily for us, it did. And so we had to keep it. Okay, so do you want to go get a drink? I might help you. Okay. Well, so the sine is 7 pi over 12 equals. Now, look in the book. They use different numbers. Did they get the same thing? They did. What did they? They wrote it kind of funny. They just factored the one fourth out. I don't like to do that. If you want to do that, I won't count off. But they just factored out the one fourth and put it in the front. I don't see any reason to do that. But we all got the same answer. So that's the answer. Let's double check it. Look real quick. You don't have your calculator. But, oh yeah, I know why you're saying that's the answer. Y'all do hate these. You hate when it's not a pretty answer like 7 or something. Okay? But let me show you real quick. That was a radian measure, correct? So I'm going to go make sure my, my calculator's in radians. You clear everything over here. Now watch. Did, well, that was sine of what? 7 pi? Is that right? Y'all help me out. I'm not looking. Pay attention. Over 12. So the value of that is 0.965, blah, 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 right? What we got was, was it the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2? Notice I have extra parentheses around the entire numerator, okay? Otherwise, it would divide first and then come back and add. I want it to do the whole numerator and then divide by, was it 4? Okay? So you can just check that you got yours right, okay? So what does this do? Well, it's another identity that we'll use in several ways, but what we did was we were able to find an exact value that's on the unit circle, um, but that is part of the unit circle, but not actually one that we have memorized, okay? So this is a way to find other units on the unit circle that you don't have to have memorized. You with me? Okay. Um, I want you to... Well, we better leave that. That's not bad. Look back at look back at your homework on 481. You're going to have some tangents there. So we're going to need to do a tangent one here in just a second. Let's do that actually now. We're going to do number 5. I guess I'll actually do this one. It's one of your homeworks. I'll do 15. Okay? I'm going to do one of your homeworks for you, number 15. You're welcome.
This is probably the last thing we're going to do today. Um, new, which means you can start your homework, but you won't be able to finish it, but that's okay. It's not due tomorrow or even the next day, okay? Remind me tomorrow, and I'll be able to tell you when this homework is due, okay? Remind me tomorrow, and I'll tell you when this homework is due. Okay, we're doing, was it tangent of 15 degrees? Okay, so we haven't used degrees in a while, but it's actually easier, right? 15. This is number 15 on your homework. I am doing a homework question for you. Here we go. Tangent of 15. So what do we have to think of? This is pretty easy. 60 minus 45 or 45 minus 30. Any of those work? So let's do which one you want. We'll go with 60 minus 45. Everybody good with that? Okay. Here we go. Now, I can't remember. I haven't done a tangent one this year. I think, is it 1 plus? Oh, and then on the bottom is the 1. Tangent A. Okay. But we have the minus one, so it's actually tangent A minus tangent B. So ours will be what? Tangent 60 minus tangent 45 over what? One plus. So if you notice, do you all mind? If you notice, the sign matches on the top, right? So it just spreads them out, matches on the top. On the bottom, it's one, and the sign is opposite. And then we just multiply them, tan 60 times tan 45. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean, the negative to a positive? Which negative turned to a positive? Right here? Um, I think if you look in the plus one, in the, if it were, if we had tangent of 60 plus 45, then there would be a plus up here. You there? Did you write it down wrong in your identity sheet, possibly? Okay. So here we go. Now we're just uh, plugging and chugging. How? Let's think about this. Tangent of 60. How can I do the tangents without having to get my unit circle? Let's think of 60 degrees. 60 degrees is right there, isn't it? What's the ordered pair right there? Right? Short, long. Now, what's the tangent? Remember the tangents? We can ignore those and we put y over x. So it's what? Square root of 3. Oh, we got an easy one. Square root of 3. We're get, they get harder. Tangents get hard to simplify. Square root of 3 minus, this one's really easy. What's the tangent of 45? It's 1 because remember it's square root of 2 over 2. Girl, what's the deal? Do you all have a question? I keep hearing this buzz and I kind of feel like it's y'all. If I'm boring you, you're welcome to just do your homework by yourself, but don't talk so loud. So tangent is, again, we don't need these. Square root of 2 over square root of 2, something over itself is 1. Okay, 1 plus, tan the good thing is you've already done them. Tangent of 60 was square root of 3. Tangent of 45 is 1. Oh, this is an easy one. Believe me, they get worse. Now, so the numerator is square root of 3 minus 1. The denominator is 1 plus the square root of 3. Now, it would be really nice if we were done, but we're not. Anybody want to know why we're not? Oh, do we want to cancel the square root of 3? Somebody say, why not? Can't cancel across addition and subtraction. Subtraction. Can you cancel the 1? Still can't cancel across addition or subtraction. Close. Close. Very close. Rationalize. That's what you mean. But it's not just multiplying by the square root of 3 because if I just multiplied by the square root of 3, it would end up distributing here and I would still have a square root of 3. So guess what? 
Ladies and gentlemen, what makes the outsides and the insides go away? Conjugates. So, oh, my board did that. Watch right here. We're going to multiply the co by the conjugate of the denominator. What is the conjugate of the denominator? 1 minus the square root of 3. 1 minus the square root of 3. I'm going to do this quickly. How does this hour go by so quick? Okay, first, outers. What are those outers going to end up being? Minus the square root of 9, which is 3. Inners. Last. Over. First is 1. We're going to skip the outers and the inners because we understand the conjugates. Minus 3. Now, notice I'm working down my paper. Careful here, this is good math. Square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 is 2 square roots of 3 minus 4 over what? Now, do you notice how everything has a factor of 2 in it? Let me show you something and then I'm going to show you the quick way. Really what we're doing is we're going to factor out a 2. And if I factor out a 2 from the numerator, don't I get the square root of 3 minus 2 over negative 2, right? And so the 2's will cancel. Now my negative is just going to hop up and get negative square root of 3. Um, wait, I need the parentheses. Negative square root of 3 minus 2. Make sure you have parentheses because when the negative pops up, there's still parentheses there. So you're welcome to put negative square root of 3 plus 2. And yes, that's the answer. Just to show you the quick way, I call it triangle reducing. Instead of having to factor that out, I know that I have to reduce all of them. Notice, the 2 goes into the 2 one time, and the 2 goes into the 4 twice. So I, I just reduce without actually showing that step. 